Hello, everyone. Welcome to Popcast on the Rocks, episode 143, where Pop Culture Podcast talks about things we like and enjoy, and sometimes there's whiskey involved. Um, my name is John, and I'm joined, as always, by Andrew. How's it going? Good, good. Happy Friday. End of the week. Woo-woo. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. back into like the swing of work, so it's it's starting to get it back into that rhythm Friday. of like, yeah, it's like, it's Friday. <laughs> nice. Cool. Well, probably you and many others, so that's that's great to hear. Right. Um, yeah, it's been a while since we've been here on Friday. We are going to talk about something, um, I don't know, suitably fun and chill for a Friday, I think. Um maybe meant to be it's a webtoon um a lot of you probably aren't following along but maybe if you find this uh at some point um you are a fan if you're not you should be a fan it's mm-hmm. a good uh like webtoon webcomic manhwa that um it's available for free so we have been covering this in the past it's just been a hot mm-hmm. minute since we have done so and uh so we're going to kind of be playing catch up all the way up to episode yeah. 65. So, yeah. And if you're um, not a fan, uh, Netflix might just uh, prod you into being one since they're scooping up Webtoon content to make shows left and right. So, yes. Prod, mm-hmm. prod. I, I thought you were about to drop news on me that they were doing this for maybe meant to be. Oh, gosh. Um, I kind of, I don't know. I kind of wish and I kind of don't. I'm not really sure how I feel. They, they've done, I, they've done yeah. suitably well so far. And the couple that I've checked out, on Netflix. Okay. Um, but I don't know. It is it is different like watching it instead of reading it. And I really like reading this. Mm-hmm. So yeah. As much as I like it, I think I just like it in webtoon format. Sure. Yeah. No, I'm I'm fine with that too. Um probably talk a little bit about uh the Nintendo event, just if we have any um big things that was uh from the other week. And um I should have put in here actually it's more relevant um is the whole xbox versus or microsoft versus ftc um deal going down so um if i think of it maybe i'll mention that sure um okay and then uh because we haven't talked about that in a while that whole deal and then um oh right yeah 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 this is like way old but new yeah Ongoing like their for, whole, yeah, the Microsoft Activision thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I gotcha. And then we'll um, see what we've been up to. Uh, talk about a couple new releases and um, kick things off with drink holidays. See what we're drinking too. Yeah, just a couple from the past uh, like week and a half since we've done the podcast. Um, on uh, June 19th, it was Martini Day. I felt I had one and I felt very like bond. Mm. That's just like immediately what I think of when I think of martinis. I just, that's all I can associate it with. It's just so strong. So, yep. If is you're feeling t- double pole, O. Like, like, was it for a while in the culture that martini was too synonymous with like sex in the city? Or is that specifically Cosmo. cosmopolitan? Okay. Yeah, that was very specifically Cosmo because I think they even made like a meta joke about it at some point towards the end of that series. There was, I just remember like some sort of scene where they were like, oh, why did we ever stop drinking Cosmos? And it was like a poking fun at the fact that they became so popular that they were over. Sure. And then they were like bringing it back because I, I remember that very vividly because that was during my bartending days. Mm. every woman who walked in the sushi bar that I worked at wanted a Cosmo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I got, I got quite good at making them, but it was definitely like, it was fine. But some nights you were just like, roll your eyes and be like, yeah, sure. I haven't made this 20 times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, I think it's interesting because I recall um, people talking about like if sex in the city kind of ruined cocktails for men and it was, mm. um, it's just, it's just another one of those things where culture is so influential, you know, mm-hmm. like pop culture mat- matters so much in terms of just people's behaviors and buying habits and all that sort of thing. Right. Systems. And, um, it, 
I mean, it's kind of silly, but I think we went into this phase then where the idea of a cocktail was a very feminine thing. And then yeah. we, it's, there was at some point where it started to switch. Maybe when Sex and the City was off the air for a couple of years, where all of a sudden yeah. you had more like speakeasies again, and you had, mm -hmm. I think, fancier cocktails. You started seeing elderflower liqueur in places. Yeah. You know, like all of a sudden it I was it. more than like yeah. chocolate martini. Uh, right. You know, well, and I think people started like feeling freer to experiment with different kinds of alcohols for cocktails. Like you saw an infusion, haha, of um, like, you know, whiskey based cocktails or like tequila based. It wasn't just like, it's only like vodka or gin, which for right. some reason, because they're clear, I think get like a rap as like girly alcohol. Sure. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Somehow, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I feel like there well, was like there's. The Oh, no, go ahead. Well, it's it's the ultimate one diet, right? You know, clear. If you're gonna do like mm -hmm. vodka soda, okay, mm -hmm. diet, and then um, it also can be made to look pretty. You can infuse it with a lot of color, right? Since it's, so clear, it's clear, yeah, you can yeah. play with the color, yeah, for sure. It's a lot harder to do with whiskey, yeah. or you know something similar, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. I'm happy that I mean, and now we're in the tr the trajectory where fewer and people fewer people are drinking. Period. You know? Yes. Well, yeah, fewer people are drinking alcohol, but not fewer people are desiring like cocktails. Right. You know what I mean? Like they're just Is like the... spirit free cocktails. Yeah. That they want. Mm -hmm. yep. Or um, I'm just starting to see. I was checking out um, some brunch places recently. Um, and uh, I'm starting to see more like, because we're in Minnesota, uh, THC drink mm, or like okay. THC based cocktails. It's like, wow, Ooh. this is like really happening now. It's really ramping up. Interesting. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's changing for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, I mean, is, our, is the name of our podcast going to be outdated soon? <laughs> podcast on the rocks and like oh, we don't you know drink anymore i don't think so because you know like i said you could still make a cocktail that's spirit free there's so many like alternatives mm -hmm. you know just uh like that are you know the like alcohol free but like the basis of like oh this is like tequila or this is like gin but without the the booze so mm -hmm. you can always go that route and I, and I think like the the takeoff of like sparkling water that's flavored and stuff. Like once they kind of nailed the ability to flavor water without adding any calories, I think that really uh, I don't mm -hmm. know change the game too. It's like I can have something with flavor that's not full of calories. You can easily right. use that in some sort of cocktail. So right. Okay. Well, you yeah. said you 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 must have, you have a martini then. You got a martini. I don't tonight, uh, but I oh, did no. prior. I did okay. prior. No, something. I have something else. I have something very summery um, tonight that I'm feeling. It is not um, what could be summer-ish. Uh, June 21st holiday was Lambrusco Day. It's a little bit on the lighter side for wines. Um, but I am celebrating. I'm just going to come right out and say it. I'm celebrating International Rosé Day, June 25th. I made myself nice. a rosé based sangria. Oh, nice. Okay. So cool. Felt, yeah, felt just like very, like I said, summertime and refreshing and just a nice way to, to relax on a Friday. So cheers. It looks good. Um, do you have berries in the bottom of that too? So the I do. I have kiwi, strawberry, orange, and a little bit of blueberry. Oh. Just yeah. like a whole fruit salad up in there. Uh, yeah, I hope you have like a spoon for when you're at the bottom. You just like, <laughs> spoon it out. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I'm not celebrating any of the holidays. Uh, I okay. was definitely considering it. I was like, oh, maybe I should just have a shot of gin, a shot of vodka to get the traditional uh, martini ingredients in here. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, well, I have a bit of a cold, so maybe I should just do this new tea I've been drinking. 
But then you're like, I'm having heavy, high alcohol content drink here. It so is. Like, right. It is. It, I've got vodka and, and rosé going up in here. Yum. And some booze-soaked fruit. It's been soaking for like three hours. So Nice. So I've got, um, I had a different kind of this before. This is another soju. Um, so this is in honor of our Korean webtoon, some Korean, um, like wine strength sort of thing. It's like rice wine kind of thing. Um, yeah. but this pineapple flavored. So they say vodka with natural flavor added. That's what it's called. It doesn't, at least not in English, say soju anywhere, but, okay. um, so yeah. But you're I'm like, I know, that. I know. Yeah. Right. So, um, Guess it's very feminine. Look how clear it is. <laughs> <laughs> you need some food coloring up in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ooh, that's good. This stuff is this mm-hmm. is dangerous. <laughs> Sake, soju, sochu, tequila. Those things are all very yeah. dangerous. I will agree on so, all accounts. We um we're having for the family a little bit of a like 4th of July thing. And um, I'll probably do a soju watermelon punch. Mm. Cut the watermelon sure. in half, blend up the watermelon inside and mix with the soju. And yeah, that's delicious. It's so. very summertime of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, uh, those are our drinks. Cheers, everyone. Salute. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrea, what have you been? What have you been watching? I have been watching a lot of very concentrated things <laughs> um, in terms of one category. I've been really trying to, like I told you kind of earlier in the week, get back into some of the anime shows that I had really been into a while back and then dropped off kind of in the middle of. Um, so I've been really trying to like get back into those. Um so I've been watching a little bit of Vinland Saga, which I believe just dropped the season finale for the second season. And I just Sounds wrapped right. up the first season. So I'm okay. about to start season two. Um, I've been watching Dr. Stone. I am somewhere in the middle of season two on that. And I believe that show is in season three right now okay. um, on Max, not HBO Max, for goodness mm. sake. Don't yeah. don't confuse the two now. I just had to switch <laughs> over or like all my viewing platforms were like, yeah. we're max now. And I was like, oh, shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been watching Dr. Stone. I've been scrambling to catch up on Demon Slayer. Um, I'm just starting season three on that. I just started season one of uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, which I believe I'm about half way through i don't remember how many episodes are in season one um but i thought i was halfway through when i stopped yeah it's like i think there's i think it's a full like 23 episodes in season one okay then i mean i might be just shy of of halfway but i think i'm at like episode 11 okay so i'm close um and then of course been reading maybe meant to be um and then just to like left field it, I watched something I've really been wanting to watch for a long time, um, which was Renfield with Nicholas Holt and Nick Cage as uh, the immortal Dracula. Man, I came out of that spoiler free. I'll, at least I'll try to keep it spoiler free. I came out of it really like feeling up and down about it like there were some really great elements nick cage just like had a ball playing dracula and you could just tell he had so much fun i think he was just one of the best things about this movie um because the plot was a little rushed it made all the elements were there it all made sense and there were some funny things about like renfield trying to break away from being dracula's servant for eternity But there were some definite gaps or some definite just like, you know, take a jump over this like canyon of a plot hole with me. And you start, you you like, I'm coming along for the ride, but I'm pretty reluctant. Like you're, you're really having to pull me here. Um, And then one of the other bright spots I thought um, was Nicholas Holt's chemistry, like comedic chemistry with Aquafina. 
um, oh, okay. who plays like kind of like the supporting second lead of this movie. Really, really funny together, and they had some great banter. But I felt like the writers ruined it a little bit by trying to like sort of maybe make them love interests. And I was like, no, no, I don't see that at all. Please don't do that. They didn't have them like, you know, like have like a big make out scene or like, you know, really try and get romantic about it. But they tried to like pair them up. And I was like, not necessary, not necessary to all sure. keep them buddies. That's much, much better. So, yeah, um, overall, I liked it, but I was disappointed because I really was expecting to love it because I thought the premise sure. was great. I thought Nick Cage as Dracula, uh, like I said, was really good. And I just expected that to, like, maybe carry the movie a little bit more and 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 have the rest of the movie be as good as his interpretation of Dracula. And it just kind of fell a little short, unfortunately. Did it feel like a weird, I mean, the, the trailer made it look like it also became this weird action thing that it yes. felt like it was going to be a comedy, sort of comedy horror. Yeah. And then it was just like, oh, where is, where is this weird Kung Fu coming from? Yeah. So I get what, like, again, I get what they were trying to do. I get what they're aiming for, but it, it does feel incongruous to like have these like really cool, actually well shot action sequences in this movie that's that's like very heavily comedic and relying on this like kind of like buddy formula but maybe mm -hmm. a little romance too um and then also like this a little bit of gore right. there's some very like graphic things that i think it those scenes actually reminded me a lot of the boys where it was like i mm. think trying to be graphic to the point of being like comedic or funny or just like you know, having that weird juxtaposition, right. but they didn't quite pull it off the way the boys pulls it off. Okay. So, hmm. yeah, just a lot, okay. a lot. This movie, I think, was aiming for a lot and just fell, unfortunately. Lost short. focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nick Cage, okay. though, great as Dracula. Nice. I and Nick, Nicholas less. Holt. Yeah, Nicholas Holt did really well when he was like bouncing off of another person, like him and Nick Cage or him and Aquafina. Like they were very fun to watch when they were playing off each other. But he didn't, or maybe it wasn't his fault, but his character in his like solo moments or his like, you know, learn more about me type of scenes didn't carry it well. It wasn't very strong. Um, Okay, I'm going to use this to to connect to a movie I watched and to sure. a news news story. Um, so sure. a while ago, Nicholas Holt, I feel like was bandied about as a name suggested to play Bond, like as mm -hmm. maybe an mm -hmm. option. Um, I remember that. Two parts, like one, how do you feel about that possibility? Even though no. I have not heard that name in a long time. No, okay. No thanks. Um, I mean. I just, mm, it's actually nothing against Nicholas Holt. Um, and I don't think that this movie is actually re representative of the better work he's done. I just, I don't see it. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. In general, I just don't see the, that. The, the, w the one way and time I saw that was like any possibility was he used to be advertising for Jaguar. If you recall, yes, he would do the I ads do. for Jaguar. And so... That would be the only time that was like, oh, okay, maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. but he has range. He see, it feels like he has range. He does. So I, you know. Yeah, and um, um, like I said, I don't, I don't think I'm using my disappointment in this like latest, you know, offering of his to say like, no, thank you to him being Bond. I just don't see it. Sure. Like, there are other people I would rather see. So the it kind of went in this order then. Um, that I decided to finally watch Bullet Train because um, other Good names movie. talked about for Bond um, include uh, the actor for Aaron Rob Taylor Stark. Aaron Taylor-Johnson, right? Aaron Taylor-Johnson in Bullet Train. And, and yeah, Idris um, Elba. Yep. Um, and so that's how I'm going to connect the news name? story. Yeah. 
Idris mm-hmm. Elba recently came out and said, I'm not interested. Once it became about race, he's like, I'm just done. So, cause a lot of people are still thinking sure. that maybe Idris Elba will be the next person. So it sounds like definitely not him. And then, um, are you trying to think of Rob Stark yet? Yeah. The name you're thinking of? Richard Madsen, you, right? That's it. Yep. Okay. Thank it, you. Some people were saying, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, David Zaritsky of the Bond Experience was saying, like, it's, they seemed like he was trying to go hard in maybe push promoting himself as a possible Bond mm-hmm. potential because one, right. he played the bodyguard in. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say, episode. like, that's obviously a great mm-hmm. like. Be like, just check me out. Like, <laughs> yep. look what I can do. Yeah. And then he's in a new show now that's kind of a spy thing. He's kind of a co-star in a spy thing. They sort of did a promotional thing that's i think it's maybe on amazon uh-huh. um oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. oh my god i totally know what you're talking about tucci's in it too that tucci yes guy. yes citadel i don't know maybe that's the name of it that sounds right citadel yes that's it okay okay so yeah and it's like poster yeah priyanka Chopra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they um and they did some sort of like cocktail sort of little like, I don't know, Instagram short or something. So just like mm-hmm. trying to put that vibe out there. Like I can be this kind of character, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, and then some people were like, some people are still really team Henry Cavill. Um, and that came out recently yeah. that Henry Cavill uh, um, tried out for, um, it's a word I'm looking for. Not tried out, not interviewed. Auditioned? audition uh, to be more specific <laughs> to the to the um industry he yeah. auditioned for the role uh back with martin campbell for casino royale oh, and he, i did not know that martin campbell said that he his he blew his audition away he did great it was an amazing audition but at the time he felt a little young mm. so so what it seemed like to me was the idea was probably we're going to get a good number of Bond films out of Craig and then Henry Cavill will be old enough and we'll go to Henry Henry Cavill. But they took a very long time to pound Mm. out those Daniel Craig films as compared comparatively in the past. So uh, Henry Cavill is not too old to start compared to like someone like Brosnan or whatever. You know, he's no. I think forty. Or like if and you're he, if you're considering Elba, like you have to you can't try right. to tell me Cavill's too old. Yep. <laughs> so I watched Bullet Train, see how Aaron Taylor Johnson was. I thought the movie in general was was pretty good. It was fun, you I know. I really liked it. Um it like it did what it was supposed to, you know, the characters were quirky and interacted well together. Um and uh you know, Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson gave another good performance. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the landscape we have? Richard Madsen, Aaron Taylor Johnson, uh, Henry Cavill, someone else for Ooh. Bond pick. Yeah. Do we want to go ro- mean, younger Bond? Do we want to go older Bond? Do we want to like completely reboot and like, yeah. you know, because that matters for who you pick that way. Sure. It's it's really hard to say because Craig did like a whole life cycle. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like he started out yes. and did like the, you know, I'm just getting my double O, you know, so he did the whole yep. like origin thing and he went all the way to like, you know, I'm retiring, I'm quitting. Oh, now I'm like yeah. gone. Now I'm back and I have a, you know, oh God, spoiler alert. Um, I have a family, you know, now I'm right. Well, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler going to die like Mm -hmm. he did everything so it's hard to say like oh it'd be so fun to like do a reboot or it'd be so fun to like see an older aged bond and you know try to come back because daniel craig did both those things um if i had my druthers i think it would be interesting to see an older bond and not start off with an origin story it's so easy to do that kind of stuff and start at a, a beginning. Um, so yeah, so not, we can absolutely start at a beginning, but maybe just not the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. My brain kind of wants this for Cavill. Cause I feel he's been so screwed over recently 
he's just been like bounced around from projects and like promised so many things and then they haven't panned out for him. Um, and I think he's a great actor. I was just rewatching um, Enola Holmes and he makes a mm. great Sherlock. He's so much fun. Okay. He and he and Millie Bobby Brown have a great like sibling rapport with each other. And it's really, even when the movie's not that great, they're great. Um, nice. so yeah, so I would love that for Cavill to like score something big, like Bond and just be like, see, I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the other hand, if we're going for somebody that like people have undervalued, Aaron Taylor Johnson is really great and he's really great in bullet train. He absolutely convinced me he could do a Bond from, from, mm -hmm that just in terms of like proving how much range he has from being like um in a marvel movie to you know i'm carrying my performance and carrying my weight in bullet train sure okay yeah i um i think i have no doubt that henry cavill would do a good job mm -hmm. i just feel like we're kind of trading then an older bond for another older bond and not that he's mm -hmm. older, you know, he looks younger than Daniel Craig and some of that, you know, but mm -hmm. um, he's, he's a good age for Bond. It just, if, do they want us, do they want to try to set up another thing where we have an actor for the next 15 years or what, you know? I kind of don't know that I want that. Okay. You want him to, you know, it, you know, because I think, will we ever go, are we ever going to go back to the, the, like cadence of a bond movie every two years or are we going to be like no we there's like a four-year gap three years to four yeah. years between h1 we kind of like are a little more thoughtful on them right you know right if you're gonna go that route obviously you need to go younger because you can't have like a six-year-old bond that's just like weird and gross and we all like watched pierce and pierce brosnan like age out of that in real time what? and that was not great no i disagree <laughs> completely on that i that was the die another fault. day no, pierce, no that was the movie's fault and not pierce brosnan's when pierce when okay. pierce brosnan's walking it around was a with, little his get with his shirt off and stuff i'm like he's he's still got it he's still in shape and then i saw him in hot fuzz i'm like he could still be bond you know like <laughs> he, i could totally see he, they just if they're gonna do that bond they have to do like relatively age appropriate bond girls. That was the problem with Roger Moore towards the end. Yeah. Is they would have Roger Moore in Absolutely. there and then they would paired him with someone half his age and that doesn't that's not it's gross. It's creepy. Day. Yeah. It's yeah. creepy at, at a level. No, I I I'm gonna push back. Like I think at that moment for his like physical fitness, like Pierce Brosnan had some like solid moments and some weak moments and i don't know like where they shot that respective to each other because you're right like the torture scene and when he like comes back mm -hmm. and escapes at mm -hmm. the yacht club he looks great yep. he looks so mm -hmm. good and then there are some like later moments where i mean the cgi does not help this at all but like when he's doing yep. like the windsurfing thing yes he looks like he's got a pot belly and i was like what happened in the span of this movie did you shoot it over like an entire year where like you know he was doing his like i'm gonna get lean and mean for the first parts and then i'm just gonna like eat a bowl of pasta a day no for the second I bet half what it was it just, I, it just i understand what you're saying i bet it, that did, it, was it didn't they match mm -hmm. they shot certain stuff first knowing he had to prepare later for the shirt of the scene sure so they shot the other stuff and then later that would be my guess so he got yeah. all prepped for the show. The scene is like, well, yeah, but you're still, you know, yes, I understand that. But, but it wasn't his, it wasn't his age. It was I'm, preparedness yeah, no. that they put in leading 80 into to, the film. Yeah. 80 to 90% of that film's problems are not Pierce Brosnan's fault. Yeah. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll cop to it. 90% of the, the film's yeah. problems are not Pierce Brosnan's fault. But yeah, there is like a little like five to 10% in there that's like, he does look old. It doesn't like uh, there are some moments where like he didn't quite look to me physically fit to be a double O. So. 
well. Um, I'm going to say but... quickly hello to MJ in the chat. So she's lurking and uh, Tom, Lurk, hello, what's Tom. Up? welcome in. We're just covering some shows and things we've been been watching before we get into some news things and webtoons. Um, okay, well, we're going to have to agree to disagree. Um, Indeed. I, <laughs> the um, but. I, yeah, I'm I'm in favor of Aaron Taylor Johnson. For, like that's mm -hmm. just my pick for Bond. I think that's that's the way I want to go. He's he's unknown enough. I've just seen Henry Cavill enough, and I really would like to just have him do his Warhammer 40k thing. Have that be awesome. I, I really I yeah, I really hope do that. hope that's a success. Like I mm -hmm. said, I I really wish Cavill the best. I think he's gotten screwed over recently out of some some roles that he's been perfect for and jerked around by the studios in in the movie sense so i really yeah. love him to have a successful I mean, project he's being replaced as superman by someone that looks shockingly like him mm -hmm. yeah. so weird so well weird. and he he got a you're coming back and then yes. just kidding like just kidding it, we'll replace you with your twin. right it's so much you know, deeper of a dig and, and harsher of a twist of that knife, given that he shot that, you know, little scene at the end of Black Adam, like yeah. I'm coming back. It was promoted that way too. So yeah. And mm -hmm. then was like, just kidding. And then, you know, on top of that, just kidding, we're going to replace you with your doppelganger. Like, yeah. F you guys. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's that. Um, we'll have future bond talk, uh, moving forward. Yes. Um, but it's a lot of slow news on that front. So we'll see. Um, I want to double back a little bit, you know, some of this is more, you know, we're going to get you on the anime podcast here when things line up, whatever. So you get lots of stuff, obviously yep. watching everything. I was going to ask how far you were in Jujutsu. We talked about that. So, um, the, thing i kind of wanted to um i i should be catching up on vinland saga one of the people on the podcast mm -hmm. is uh definitely into that um it's but i really haven't watched good. it in a long time um i wanted to rant a bit though like so firstly mm -hmm. how are you liking jujutsu kaisen like, i like it a lot one? okay i like it a lot yeah so Mike is watching it and getting tired of which I understand the um, heavy handed exposition and explaining of powers and abilities. Sure. Um, sure. And you know. I am getting, I am getting really tired of like excusing this sloppy writing because mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I posited this idea that maybe in shown in particular, because the the competition to get in the good magazines and to be in print there is so intense that they don't waste any time and they want to have explained to you what's happening, what this world is and what's going sure. on. So like there's no time to like leave too much mystery on things or to let you be a little confused on something because we if we're not hitting numbers, not winning in the polls, we're all of a sudden out of the magazine and we're mm -hmm. our our comics gone. Mm -hmm. That was just an idea because otherwise, the only thing I can think of is people not knowing how to write or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know exposition is a difficult thing. But it's a problem, I feel like, in a lot of anime. And it's it's it a problem. It's a deterrent for me. A lot of the time in a show that's like my number one deterrent is if you're like too heavy on the exposition it's really yeah. hard and there's something because it's drawn that it's more it's been more easy over the years for me to excuse it's kind of like those sure. you can get away with more th it's the same thing as is in a book you know you can get away with a lot of corny lines and different stuff in a novel because it's not being said aloud to you. And then mm -hmm. you read it aloud and you're like, oof. And so yeah. if you take Twilight and you this? make it into a movie and <laughs> you, you know, this? it's like, right, exactly. So someone's like not reading the stuff back. I started the manga, a new manga by Junji, uh, Junji Ito, prolific horror Japanese writer. Mm -hmm. um, 
well-known, has written tons of things. This is one of his newest works. And in the first couple pages, I'm just going to set the premise of this first story or whatever. This group of people met in this website and they were going to meet in person and go kill themselves. So it was a, like a group suicide pack thing. Okay. And they're on their way to go out to a place to do this. And the character turns around and asks someone, I, I was going to bring the manga in here to read it verbatim, and I forgot. Um, the person says, so we all met on this website, named the website, mm -hmm. and agreed that we were going to come out here and do this. So why don't we talk about all, why we've all come to this conclusion? Or like, what, what's our motive behind deciding to, to kill each other? ourselves and i it was like a breaking point for me i flipped out because it's not that bad comparatively but i'm thinking you all know that you met on this specific website right. and you've now agreed to do this you all know this all all he would so have had clunky. to change in this dialogue would have to be like all right we've all agreed to do this i'm just curious what are you Right. What's the motive for all you? What right. we, we don't need to know the website listed and that we met at right. the website. You wouldn't exactly say that. So no, why are you clunky. writing? I just it's it's driving me nuts well, now because ugh. and like what is what is the point of it? Because like why does your audience even need to know that? No, yeah, right. there's there's literally no point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like it's literally useless information like we don't need to know the name of the site right we just need to know that like you met on the site which like you said you can just be like yeah we all know how we met on the site mm -hmm. why yep it's so simple and like people people can catch up like people's brains can like follow these you know like very baby leaps very you yep. know like v yeah very small like leaps in information we can follow that yep um francesco's in the chat thanks for jumping in Yay. right now we're talking about exposition problems in anime yes. and manga um why it sucks sometimes uh yeah and i i pointed to shonen a lot i'm like are you just writing down to the audience you know or something like that is it like you're you're aiming at a younger audience so therefore you're assuming they can't follow but i mean something like this say the website was important all you need to do is show a person Channel. on their phone on yes. the on the show site visually. now you know the name of the site right right visual storytelling visually yeah okay. oh no you're breaking up can you still hear me okay there you are uh you are too <laughs> okay uh um so I don't, I don't know. It's, I can't, I'm not going to write off these things because there's so much enjoyment I get from them. Something like Jujutsu Kaisen mm -hmm. or like Demon Slayer. There's a lot, there's a thing I've talked about it before in anime. There's like a, a set of emotions or a bodily experience that they put me through that like other content doesn't do. Like the visual yeah. splendor that I is thrust totally. into my eye holes is like <laughs> valuable to me. Okay. You know? I mean, I was with you until you described it like that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I still appreciate it a lot, and I would take right. this over something that is is boring or repetitive or you know um, production values low or you know preachy something that's preachy whatever you know I but at the same time guys we got to clean this up these are yeah. something like Jujutsu Kaisen one of the biggest media things around right now like mm -hmm. you can buy Jujutsu Kaisen manga in the in Target and Walmart. Um, yep. It is a massive property. They released the movie in the theaters here the other year. Um, mm -hmm. And again, Junji Ito is a prolific horror writer for this. And I just don't know. I, the other thing is like, is it translational? Like is it a translator issue? But I feel like I can't, it can't be that far no. off. It's that's too much. So no, cause I mean, when you think about like what I watch, like I tend to watch like Japanese um like mm -hmm. for anime i tend to watch the japanese version and, and you know watch the subtitles and 
I mean, those are obviously different than when you dub it. Um, right. Because I was curious one time is if, like, you know, they really do, like, do it more interpretive or if they do just, like, literally read the subtitles. They don't. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's still clunky. Mm-hmm. Like, I still I have complaints about the exposition and, like, too much over-explaining. It's just, like, it, you... It doesn't sound as ridiculous, but I, you know, still get tired of it. Yeah. In, in it, it's just like, I get tired of it or I get myself, I find myself annoyed by it in a different way because I'm like, this just isn't necessary. I don't need to be reading all of this versus like now I'm watching Jujutsu Kaisen in English and I don't need to hear some of it. Right. Yeah. Yep. The, uh, and other things handle it differently. Like, um, my hero academia takes a page again from like x-men comic books and stuff and mm-hmm. they do on the in between screens all the time they show a hero yes. their name their hobby what they like their blood type yep. you know like they just fill in information fine that is absolutely fine you can have a manga and up front you get all the way a bunch of this stuff you can do explainers like character little bios often in, and in yes. front of a new volume of manga they kind of catch you up as to what a person is or maybe what they've done a little bit that is all fine. I'm re- reading um, Heavenly Delusion, which mm, okay. is great. I'm waiting for the final volume in the middle of July here. Phil's done watching the anime adaptation on Hulu, and that is something that's very well written. It leaves a lot of mm-hmm. mystery, lots to be, you know, like figured out, and it doesn't feel heavy. Hand- so, like, it can be done. There's people out there doing it. I just, right. I'm tired of these big, prolific properties being so lazy with it and i'm gonna complain about it every freaking time now i cover it even if it means i still like the thing i'm going to complain about it because it is a it is a fault so. but yeah i mean it's you can like something and still recognize its flaws and still yeah. want it to be better i mean just because you like something doesn't mean that you're just like i like it and that's the end all be all like you can just be like i like it and be better yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so yeah (laughs) i i I don't really say much of what i'm doing this week just yeah bullet train (laughs) i've been watching a lot of anime um there's a little side little side one more sidetrack i want to take us on yeah before (laughs) i talk about this other sidetrack and then we'll get into the the main (laughs) stuff here so I just, I don't want to ignore it. It's not particular, so we don't need to spend a ton of lot of time on it because it's not particularly relevant. Okay, I would say to our podcast, but okay. Francesco in the chat is asking about hello UA, UAP whistleblowers. <laughs> so, do you think that if USA has alien tech for real, they should keep the info secret, or they have to share it to the public? So if we take the idea that aliens are real and here. The UAPs okay. are a thing. Okay. And the government knows about it. Should they keep the tech secret? Or are they should they feel obligated to share it with the public? Ooh. Can I can I equivocate and do a both and? Um like, yes, I think you should share it unless it's some sort of like weapon that you don't understand because then i don't feel that that's responsible to just be like i think it's a weapon could harm some people but here's what it is and how it works i don't know okay okay do i mean i don't feel like that's very responsible i i would say like figure some stuff out about it first maybe you know do do some basic like analysis and figure out like what kind of tech you're dealing with and is it responsible to share with the public? Um, okay. So yeah, so I'm going to kind of equivocate on it, I guess. Okay. I'm going to say the right thing to do is share it. You make it public. I will say I can understand someone that has the information choosing to not. Mm-hmm. You know, like you say, if they think it's something you feel is dangerous or whatever, I can understand that happening and being the case. Right. Though I do think the right thing is that it's shared and made public. Or like I said, if you don't, I guess you don't know what it is. Like if you, like I would never, I don't think it's responsible of any 
you know, researcher or analyst to just find something and be like public without at least, you know, attempting to find out what something is or, you know, find out a little right. bit more about it. You know what I mean? There's no like, yeah, I don't know. There's no harm in just like no, figuring no, what you mean. out like, a little like bit validate, validate before yeah. you, yeah. No, I, I yeah, before you share and like, mm -hmm. and, and share it with a, we've looked at this and this is what we know so far. You know, you don't have to know 100% everything there is to know about it, but at least know enough that you're like, I can confidently tell you what this is and how, in essence, I think it works and, and maybe what it's for. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the idea that's been presented to me anyhow is that if the, is that if this has been going on for a long time, crash landings and stuff, and governments mm -hmm. throughout the world will have uh, access to and have retrieved crashed ships, all that sort of mm -hmm. thing. And so the idea would be that they would each be keeping it secret because take letting it out of the bag means putting it into your enemies slash competition's hands. Mm -hmm. And so the governments of the world will not let this be a public thing because they need to individually crack the code first to be able to use sure. the tech first because it's a major military advantage or whatever it is over your over your competing nations it'd be like sure. the same to like racing to create the atomic bomb you know sure. if you were attempting to do that you couldn't let your sworn enemies have that as well like you need to hold on to this until you've you know Harn right. harnessed it and mastered it and stuff like that so it's totally feasible to me again that if yeah if this is if this were to be true which i don't think it is honestly <laughs> um then uh i think that it would be kept secret uh, for sure so i can understand the the, the kind of secrecy behind it mm-hmm um oh, well interesting question um <laughs> yeah i was i always uh, love like random questions like that like, you know what i mean just like just kind of what would you do if or like what do you think about x like it's always yeah. fun to be like what do i think about that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah thanks francesco t um okay so let's see do i want to go down this road oh, i was gonna yeah i think we'll have to save that for another time uh i was going okay. to talk about Mashal, Magic and Muscles, another anime, and I'm wearing a Ravenclaw shirt, and Mashal is very much like a parody of Harry Potter. Okay. Um, like super par like I'm okay with how similar it is because it's obviously a parody. It's so where is this? Is this on it's on Crunchyroll? Crunchyroll, okay. Yep. And they just announced All a season right. two is coming in January. Okay. Um, I'm only through the first five episodes because that's, I, I just wanted something fun and easy to watch. And so I was watching in English and that's all that was, has been dubbed at this point. Okay. So it's totally like the premise is just, there's essentially Hogwarts and this one kid for reasons has to go, but he has no magic. For reasons. <laughs> yeah. But he is very, very strong. He's spent okay. his whole life just working out, honing his physical uh, being. And so he has to survive the magic school with his strength alone. And he loves cream puffs. So, okay. <laughs> so if you're looking for something funny and silly and whatever, and a, a total parody of Harry Potter, then uh, okay. Mashal, Magic and Muscles. Yeah. Um, okay. We're getting to a busy season. We've got tons of new things yep. coming out, all kinds of things. Uh, are you Summer interested in any of them? Flicks. Yeah, are you like like going to any? We got Evil Dead is available on streaming now. The new one, yes. Indiana Jones, came out. Insidious is on, like, I think Friday. Barbie yes. and Mission Impossible are coming out like next week. And Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 is also coming out next week. So, so I, will, I will say Evil Dead, heck yes, love that. Um, indie, I am not, I can't, it's sad and weird. And speaking of people who are too old, I love you Harrison <laughs> Ford, but too old. Um, insidious. I love that franchise. So yes, absolutely. We'll mm -hmm. be watching. 
Um, Mission Impossible, yes, I'm excited for. I just restarted, like, watching through, like, from the first uh, because it just felt like the right time. Like, I know you've been doing that as well. So I was just like, yeah, this is the right time. I think I'm going to hit it very nicely where I'll finish um, the previous just in time to see the new one. Okay. Um, Obviously, like, I just started Jujutsu Kaisen, so I am you know, hoping to finish season one in time for the new season coming out. And then I do want to say something that's not on here, but I also am really excited for um, the new season of Miracle Workers is coming out uh, in the first week of July, which, I mean, ties in when you're talking about Harry Potter, because obviously Daniel Radcliffe fronts that show. And they're doing this season, it's um, like a post-apocalypse kind of theme. Mm. So. Okay. I'm really excited to see that because they've oh, done, they've done like angels, they've done a medieval theme, they've done the Oregon Trail, um, and now they're doing, yeah, like post-apocalyptic times. So, cannot wait for that. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I shockingly haven't seen that advertised at all. I guess I'm watching the wrong network or whatever. Yeah. So I. Uh, I mean, it hasn't been advertised super heavily, but I just caught it the other day. Um, I have no idea what I was watching when I saw it come on, but I was just like, yes, it's happening. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I I mean, I really want to get to Mission Impossible, but I don't know that it's going to happen. I might end up having to wait till it comes out uh, yeah. streaming side or, or something like that. And I'd like to see Insidious as well, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm definitely watching Jujutsu Kaisen and recovering that show. So, yep. Um, I didn't think they'd make another Insidious. I don't recall I, how the last one ended, but I I thought that would be done. Yeah, no this this came out of total left field when I saw mm-hmm. the first trailer. I was like, what? I definitely thought this was done. So I'm pumped mm-hmm. that they're continuing. Well, we should do if we can manage it. Then at least do a Mission Impossible retrospective. When we get to absolutely through them all. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Okay. A little bit of news. Um. So the the new hotness that in my circles has really been like covered every day is the rekindling of the like. FTC versus Microsoft. We talked mm-hmm. previously on the show about how Microsoft for a lot of money is trying to acquire Activision Blizzard King. Mm-hmm. It was like looking like it was going to go through and then it wasn't. Yep. And then basically everybody was approving it around the world. Like mostly yeah. it was going through and all the regulatory bodies were saying yes. Um, FTC is a hold up. And so Mm -hmm. that's, they've been in trial. They've had been in front of a judge and they've been putting people on the stand. Phil Spencer has been there. Satya Nadella has been there. Uh, I think Pete Hines has been there. The bunch of people have been in, have been on the stand. Um, I don't know where people are watching this or I probably would have turned some of this on. So I'm just getting recaps for things. Yep. But it's been very interesting and things have come out. There's always stuff that documents that get exposed, the exposed, like the amount of money that the last of us and horizon games cost Mm -hmm. to make, um, the kind of tactics that different companies are using. And, you know, a couple of the big takeaways, if I can think of some of them is like one Microsoft decided to buy ZeniMax Bethesda Mm -hmm. because PlayStation had bought exclusivity for Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop and was allegedly trying to get Starfield as well. And so Microsoft was like, we're just, we're that's we can't have that happen we can't lose Mm -hmm. starfield like the first original ip from bethesda studios in years uh we're not so we're just buying the farm so that was the impetus for this sort of thing and i it's gonna be it's gonna be just fascinating listening to the fanboys on every side like come down on all these different things it's been really 
fun. Uh, I got like a number of podcasts. Like for a while, this issue was so boring, but now it's spicy. So yep. uh, now that there's um, like a real you, trial, it's just like yeah, ooh, yeah. Like it's it's and, it's a real almost. It's like legit in a new way. Yep. yep. I look, I come down on the side of Microsoft on this thing. So I, I won't like hide that from anyone or try to pretend mm -hmm. otherwise. I think that, but it's, um, so I, I'm, I have a PlayStation podcast that I listen to. I'm going to listen to their side and see what, how they, they take it. Right. Um, but have you like managed to see anything from this or like taking away anything from it or. No, totally haven't. I, I, remember us like chatting about it on the podcast and like how intense it was a long time ago. And now it's been like so dead to me for such mm -hmm. a long time because nothing's happened. And now I'm just like trying to play catch up. So I mm -hmm. had no idea that this trial was going on right now. I read a lot of things. To me, about, it was still yeah. like out lost in the ether. <laughs> right. Um, I learned a lot of things talking about how the FTC lawyers were really kind of embarrassing uh, really yeah. sort of not um, kind of stepping out of line for the the type of questioning that they're that they're putting to Microsoft trying to get commitments out of them and stuff like that on mm -hmm. the stand for yeah. deals going forward almost negotiating for PlayStation that's the weird yeah. thing is this conversation is all about Xbox versus PlayStation and they keep trying to omit um, like mobile and like other mm -hmm. PC platforms and then particularly Nintendo like King. Um, yeah. So like Nintendo, they, you know, the FTC and PlayStation, which feels like the same side often is mm -hmm. say like, just tries to say that Nintendo doesn't exist. They actually mentioned that like Nintendo's switch system has like too few teraflops compared to, you know, compute power compared to the Xbox and PlayStation. So therefore they're mm -hmm. not competition. Yeah. When we look at sales numbers and money brought in and stuff like that, and Nintendo is massive. Yeah. Um, you know, Phil Spencer even brought that up, I guess, as a point, like he's like most generations, the weaker console is the one that ends up winning the, the console race mm -hmm. of that gen. Like it's not a power thing that determines its quality of games and marketing, you know? Well, so. I think, I think the FTC is just, taking a little bit of a narrow view because when you think about it, yeah, like Nintendo's weaker in the U S but like Xbox is strong in the U S but it's weaker in the outside world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes I think yeah. they just like forget that. Sure. Like they're they're yeah. They forget like what, that this is like a global application and they just sort of are like focusing on the U S which Makes mm. sense, but you can't do that in this particular case. But even so, in the United States, Microsoft is easily third. So when we're talking Nintendo, Sony, PlayStation, Microsoft yeah. is vastly behind. They are, they just, the way it is, you know, like Nintendo and Sony are dominant. And, uh, you know, that really turned around in you know this last generation and microsoft has mm -hmm. never recovered so it's um like it's just disingenuous and they they always are like they're everybody's so concerned about call of duty as if mm -hmm. this one game is going to be perpetually the best thing forever it's just right. like you know you can't i don't know it's uh it's been fun um i'm trying to i wish i could i you know Totally forgot about this story at first, or I would have pulled up some more data on yeah. it. But maybe in the next week we'll we'll see what uh where things are falling. But um Yeah, we should cover it next week for sure. So yeah, keep up on that trial. Let us know what you think of it. Um in other gaming news, it's a little old now, but um the Nintendo Direct happened. Um you get to catch this? I did. I caught the whole thing. I love it. Nintendo, I feel like, is killing it with their directs. They're just, like, such a good time. Like, the 40-ish minute range is just, like, perfect to introduce things but not make things drag on. They've got a lot of, like, great mix of gameplay, a lot of different games, um, like, and obviously their, like, biggest 
biggest news is Mario Brothers related, which I mean, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, of course of it is because, yeah, I mean that's that's the right time to announce all of this, like with mm-hmm. everybody just coming off of the movie and just like enjoying like a resurgence right now. It's just perfect. And I think they're yeah. just timing everything out really right. Yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, it kind of they announced this sort of uh, kind of last minute. Nintendo's kind of mm-hmm. been doing that. They're not like saying this thing, hey, you know, in two weeks we're doing this thing. You know, it's just like, hey, Which it's happening. Nice. And like, yeah, uh, I I like that as well. Um, and you know, people were really questioning, like, is this kind of what is this it for Nintendo for the year? You know, which is mm-hmm. Zelda game, massive. And then Pikmin yeah. 4, which is, you know, a good series, but it's it's not on the level of some of their other other franchises. No. Um, but then they drop this and we get a lot from it. You know, um, we, um, you know, a new Detective Pikachu, finally. That's cool. Um, mm-hmm. They dropped that, uh, you know, Super Mario RPG is being remade. I think a lot of people were excited about that. There's going to be a lot Absolutely. of people that haven't played it making um a new peach game just like letting mm-hmm. us know like it's again the stuff that's coming out soon this year mixed in with like yes. hey by the way we're working on this this will be next year you know yeah um luigi's mansion sort of the same thing but they're bringing oh, like so luigi's pumped. mansion 2 to to this to the switch yep. so then all the luigi's mansion games will be available on the switch um they get uh, you know, the Metal Gear collection. They did they did a day one drop of this of Pikmin one and two on the eShop. So it's another mm-hmm. one just like last time with Metroid. They're like, hey, by the way, this these classic games, uh, pick them up today now and play them. Right. Um go back and get new prepared. Warrior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, I'm so uh, excited then... about that. I would so play that at a party. Yeah, and this one looks better than the last one. Like it does. I don't like the last one as much. This one looks. This one looks like a lot of fun. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then yeah, Mario. So like, it's just if you're a Nintendo fan, you like a lot of their franchises. I mean, I don't know. There's not a lot to complain about here. Um, you know, some things that were you know surprises. Vampire Survivors, you know, makes sense. That was a big hit game coming. Mm-hmm. The system star ocean the second story r that one is uh i think something that a lot of people will be looking forward to you know just having um a, a, an interesting omission was they mentioned persona 5t and not the persona 3 remake mm-hmm. so people are still wondering if that's coming to the switch sure. or not but um yeah it's good direct it's fun yeah, yeah, it's it was a, a good Nintendo on the rise. A, yeah, it was a good it was a good showcase. Like they just crushed it, I felt like. There's a lot of Mario content. Like I said, obviously they're capitalizing on all of that, but they did a great job interspersing, like, no, nope, we haven't forgotten about these other things. Like, don't worry, we're doing some really cool stuff. Great stuff upcoming, like stay tuned, but also like we haven't forgotten our other IP as well. Andrea, are you gonna are you guys gonna save up for the next gen switch or something? I mean, yes. All all this these games you're missing out on, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm re- and like I'm I'm in a um I don't know, I feel like I'm in a gear switching moment where I've been really focused on, you know, watching different things on streaming and now I'm sort of like getting back into like I miss anime, I miss gaming. And so I mm-hmm. feel like that's my moment right now. Mm -hmm. so yeah i can't i do i also get in those kind of lanes you know Mm -hmm. and then i need i need a a break a breather i need to switch to something else or whatever Mm -hmm. it's sometimes difficult for me to manage and be in both those lanes at once yeah um it's you know i've been i've been playing zelda you know tears of the kingdom on on the side and slowly making my way through that you know so I'm through right. a couple dungeons or temples in there. Um, and then, um, but yeah, like I, now I'm watching a lot of anime, especially for the podcast. But then it's like, ah, sometimes I'm going to, I know I'm going to crave just like a live action thing. So yep. like, and like Webtoons, I hadn't touched Webtoons in a long time. So like, you know. Same. Like, so. When I was, when I was catching up, um, I mean, I didn't have as far as you to go on maybe meant to be. Um, but when I was catching up a little bit, 
on this this webtoon, I noticed like some of the other webtoons that I'd really loved. I was like, man, I've got like four or five episodes of each of these. I haven't touched it in a while. Mm -hmm. So I was just like binging on a lot of that to catch up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm seeking out some new stuff, looking at a couple different things. I really don't need it because I just have these manga series I'm waiting for. I kind of keep reading or whatever. So that usually keeps me enough. And like I've backed a lot of independent comic books in the last year. Yes, so I think I'm gonna start getting like more and more of those as they are like get to reach the finish line. So right. Um, Alan brings up here in our private chat, Final Fantasy 16 is out now as well. Yes, that is also true. a new release that uh, that happened. So. That is true. I, I was originally hearing news stories when that was leading up to launch that like pre-orders were much lower than expected. They were a little worried about it. And some people are like, mm. if you on the combat, you know, it's such a different, you know, some people, I think IGN even had a thing like however many times, like 60 times Final Fantasy 16 is just straight up Game of Thrones. So, um, but I think the game is reviewed well and it looks cool and all that stuff. So, sure. Yeah. I haven't paid too much attention uh, to it myself. Um, okay. That's, uh, that's it. Also in the chat, let us know if you want to see us play video games. If you'd like, yeah. you know, like every other week or something, you want to see us do that <laughs> sort of thing, then, uh, you know, let us know. But we are here to talk Here's about something Maniac I can knife my way through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Borderlands. oh my God. <laughs> I'd be I just tease, like up someplace else and be like, right, Andrea, Andrea, are you coming? <laughs> I'm like seven levels ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, maybe meant to be. We're talking in a spoilery fashion, um, all mm-hmm. the way up to episode 65. Um, I kind of, you know, I put in. I think it was 49 through something because just because. Like, okay, so last we covered this, we had went up to episode 40. Oh, and, wow, okay. And and so then... It's really been a while. Yes. And then I read myself up to like 49. Sure. And then we're like, hey, we should do this. So then we read all the way up to 65. So that's how this is happening here. Um, when I... Let's see. I'm trying to think of when I left off exactly before it was kind of a weird point we, sure. oh she was so she was just getting into her new job mm-hmm. and uh that was like you know she's being hired by a, f- a friend and some of that and um because she has having money issues mm-hmm. and then she lost um, the stock market yeah mm-hmm. which i think is the low point of this series honestly is like i thought that was a little unrealistic and like i like everything, it's all gone. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know it can happen, but like, I get, you know, I'd have just. Yeah, it, yeah. it was. It was a mixed bag for me because, like you said, really, like everything, and then at the really? same time, I really felt they stayed true to her character by her being so like prideful and like refusing mm. to ask for help and being like, "I'm fine, I'm fine," like it's all mm-hmm. gonna be fine. Like I'm gonna reinvest and do this thing. And like, it's all going to work. You know what I mean? Like she was so stubborn mm-hmm. about it that I was like, this is very true to her character, but the circumstance was a little unbelievable. So it was hard. Right. Um, I want to get my one other like gripe out of the way. I think maybe I yeah. guess just because it's on my mind. Um, I feel like there has been a, a suffering in the art department in this. <gasps> We have John is noticing the art and has a complaint. <laughs> yes. What John never notices so, the art in general. I think the art is still really good and it is yeah. head and shoulders above most of what I've seen on webtoons, in my opinion. <clears throat> but, um, there's like been a change in the like even proportionality. I think I feel that Gia often is like. Look at her arm, and if you're watching this, look at her arm in yeah. this shot. It mm-hmm. is incredibly thin. 
Like yeah. I, she used to be Too a thin. little bit curvier, feel a little more womanly. And, and often now she's drawn very stickish, just really, really thin. And I think that even uh, Minchol at times has slimmed down too. Now, I don't know if this mm -hmm. is like, I know they have now, but they have for quite a while had a art assistant. So I don't know, because there's like hero shots and like moments that I look like they're really paid more attention to and they're still really good and everything. And then there's other ones that they verge into also the kind of cartoony uh, mm -hmm. more than they used to. You know, sure. uh, great thing about anime and manga and all stuff is, and is, and you know, Western comics don't really do this, but they do here is they'll jump between art styles in order to really express of whatever, you know, right. so really beautiful in terms of one thing when a serious moment or whatever, and then all of a sudden there's a silly moment and it's very like silly, very mm -hmm. cheap. Um, so. Those those two things, the, the proportionality is a little bit off to me and seems yeah. different. And so I don't know if this is a trying, I'm trying to speed up and then the jumping to cartoony too often. Sure. I definitely agree with you about like noticing that their proportions are off sometimes like in the, in the panel that we just saw that was just on the screen, like mid chill looks a lot smaller mm -hmm. than he normally does. Um, so I get that there are definitely those moments and even accounting for like, they were trying to be like, Gia goes to the gym every day with Minchol and like, you know, maybe she's slimmed up now. Like no, that, that lives all in our minds. Like we don't need to see it in her physical body. <laughs> like mm -hmm. just draw the same. If anything, they get um, more muscle. They're lifting. Right. Weight, right. You know? Right. Well, and this isn't like a, like, you know. That's not the focus of this webtoon. Right. It's not like the main character is going through like a transformation where you'd be like, all right, like I give you license to, you know, right. draw them differently now. So, yeah, I agree with that one. I guess I haven't noticed the like silly shots as much or like the chibi shots as much, but that's a legit like if if it bothers you, that's legit. I know chibi is not the right word for this. There's maybe a different term, you know, not actually sure. drawing chibi I, characters, just like, like, but I know, what's what, here but I know now, it's, mean. yeah, it's a, it's a sillier form. Yes. I'm right. Yeah. So, um, other than that, I'm still really liking it. So we kind of got into the mom, Minchol's mom coming over, oh, so good. Uh, coming for a visit. I thought that was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun, especially because it like, was a very classic, like, uh oh, our mother in law's coming, like, you know, we have to perform for her. But mm -hmm. also the fact that her backstory was a little bit different, like she knew them yes. as kids because she was like working at their school and like then we could throw a little nostalgia in there, do a little like rewind mm -hmm. to the past. That was fun for me. Like a good yes. twist on like the traditional like cold mother in law. Mm -hmm. that's what this series really does that keep i mean and th that really is the trick to playing like a genre thing that you're you're you need to satisfy all the things that are telltale signs or are moment or you know key moments and like facets of that genre but right. you don't want it to be exactly the same and this right. series do it, does do it very well way. yeah in like not you know, like just subverting expectations for the fun of it, but like really, really just changing it enough to make, keep us guessing right. a little bit, not know what's going to happen. And, uh, but still being, having the satisfying results. Right. Well, and they're very well thought out twists, you know, or very mm -hmm. well thought out, um, you know, plays on this traditional, like part of the genre. It's never just like, well, they're changing. I never feel like I'm reading something and they're like changing it just to change it and be unique. It's always like, yeah, there's a reason behind. And even if it's not right away, it, it ends up revealing itself. And it's like, wow, that was really smart. Yep. Yep. Uh, Minchel's on the screen now. It was a great, that was a great time going out shopping to try to get him different yes. clothes because he's got so it and stuff. And who do you choose? He's like, who's better? He's gone through like several different makeovers in these panels, like these latest panels that we've gone through. Like, like you said, they did the like 
mom versus Gia dressing Minchol, um, yeah. which I definitely agreed with Gia. Um, yes. But then, you know, he got like a little mini makeover for like their date too. And that was really mm-hmm. fun. Um, so it's sort of like his own twist on that. Um, he did something else too that I can't remember that he did like a whole new look for. Um, hmm. Oh God, that's going to bug me. But yeah, it's just, it's been fun to see like some plays on his like very traditional style. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. His Red it's, Devil's uh, t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And the story behind it, you know, it's nice to have that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I Oh, they're talking I, about the glasses versus not glasses and like why he wears them. Yeah. That it's was like, fun. oh, he wouldn't still remember that. And like yeah. Well, yeah, he would, you know. So it'd be interesting to see how Yeah, I love I love those moments. They're kind of reconnecting in terms of like the the gaming, you know, they're playing the games yes. together and trying to um I must beat you sort of thing. And I I like that they did, you know, we got like they delayed all this stuff, but, you know, you have to pay us out eventually giving us results. And so we got the result that they admitted that they like each other. Mm -hmm. Wow. For a married couple, you know, (laughs) and that they were going to like start dating and stuff. So that was, yeah, like we had progress. We had uh, we had the great elevator moment. It's like, what was it? Like, if you, you got to kiss me in the next five seconds, you know, yeah. if we're going to do this. And then, of course, someone walks in. So that was great. Mitchell's just worried about resetting the counter in <laughs> five seconds or something. <laughs> so, so cute. Um, yeah. I really, great. I, yeah, I really like that, that, um, that progress. But I also love that now, they're they're again doing this really smartly where it's like, okay, we're dating, but what does that even mean? You know, right. like he is we're getting this a lot from Gia's perspective, but she's a lot like, okay, so things should be different because we're dating. Mm-hmm. But how? How yeah. should they be different? Like I'm still figuring out, like, is Minchel gonna approach things differently because we're dating? Or, you know, like how do how do we do this? Yeah. Yeah, because we had at first, he's like, sort of overreact. Like, I'm buying you gifts constantly. Yes. All the gifts. She's like, whoa, then, whoa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you stop that, and then you worry, like, well, now are they not going to do anything? Or is that, you know, <laughs> I don't want to, like, st- you know. So we saw this a little bit with our other couple a ways back. I'm mm-hmm. blanking on their names now because this chunk you we covered and- here. And oh, it's another S name. It's gonna bug me. But they did. They did at least make an appearance. Thank you. Yes, for checking in on them. Yeah, that's, that's right. They had a little bit more, and that I didn't like this part as much because I would have. I would have been ready to strangle his brother or his sister. The, his sister. The sister. Yeah. His sister. You yeah. Know, so yeah, we have that whole moment where it's like she is aware that becomes aware that his girlfriend is lurking and is trying to do things to like, you know, set her off because yep. she doesn't know that she's his sister. Yes. I don't find that amusing. So I'm scrolling through uh, because I'm trying to figure out her name. Um, and I just remembered like the setup for this, like check in on them where she's like trying to have a day to herself. Cause she's like, Oh, when I'm on a date, I can't like eat what I want oh, because I don't want to be a pig. Yeah. And it's like such a great typical like female problem where women are like, oh, I don't want to be like a pig on a date. So I like eat tiny can't little order the bites. Ribs. And, right. And then she just like goes off. She's like, finally, I can have a day where I can just like stuff my face and he's not mm-hmm. around. And it's mm-hmm. even if it's not like eating is your thing that you don't want to do around your significant other, it's such a common thing of like, Couples like are like, oh, I have a date of myself where I can do my things mm-hmm. that I even don't sometimes want to share with my significant other. Like the weird habits I have, the TV I want to watch, the things I want to eat, whatever it is. I feel like in every relationship, there's like stuff that you just want to do by yourself sometimes. Mm. 
And I love that this, this, you know, was exploring that aspect of relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, like a lot of that stuff was always, you know, I, you know, it's certainly the stereotype anyway, is to be that that's a big dating element. Like some, you know, people are yeah. worried about revealing a certain thing to someone right. while they're dating and they're not certain, right. you know, like they, like, are you ready and, to take this, this weird quirk of mine, whatever, what it, yeah. like I said, whatever it is, if it's something about your eating habits or like the TV you watch or like the hobbies you have, whatever it is, like sometimes yeah. you're just like, I just have to do this by myself. Cause I'm not ready to show it yet. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I I have to say I don't I don't I'm trying to think as you say this now like I don't know that I have any of any of that now. Like I know I well, pick now. different things to watch potentially. Well, right, right. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, like when you know, because there's that that balance that people do. Like some people go extreme where they like almost not themselves dating, yeah. and then they're married. And now, like, oh, I can relax. It's like, and, yeah. And it, wait a minute. But then your partner's like, who are you? Who, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who did I marry? Wait a minute. But I mean, mm -hmm. it was it was very nostalgic for me to read those panels to be like, yeah, like that. You know, I don't think I fully hid things when Chris and I were dating, but sure, yeah, there was like early on in the dating, you know, where you're just like, I'm not sure if you're ready to see this yet. So when you do get a day by yourself, you're like, oh, I can just do that thing and it's fine. Mm -hmm. I think the second time Ashley met me, I was wearing like a vest and steampunk goggles around my neck because I just come from anime detour. And nice. This, and so definitely right away, it's like, yeah, you like, you know, like, oh, here's you like my that. stuff right stuff. away. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, a, that was, that was a fun aside, even though I was not okay with what the sister did. Um, I agree, but it was fun to check in on them at least and be like, yes, they yep. are alive. Cause I did enjoy them. Yep. Mm -hmm. The whole, um, couple. on the screen now is the like sleeping arrangements again, trying to hide mm -hmm. that from the mom, you know, make yeah. this all look genuine. That was good. Those are good moments. And I like the new sort of like where Gia's always guessing. Is Minchul just that like unaware? Yeah, what are his motives? Or does yeah. is he just a sly, you know, sly devil here? Right. Um, and we kind of keep us guessing too. I know. I was going to say sometimes I'm not even sure. Yeah. So I, I like that aspect of it. Um, Let's see what else. Um, so, I mean, where episode 65 ends is just they've like agreed they're going to go on a date, even like barely said the words date. And, and Mitchell is like almost going to be late and he comes walking up and whoa, red alert. He yeah. doesn't have his glasses on. So, right? you know, got a wow. whole different hairstyle, new clothes, mm -hmm. just looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Top that's, where, that's where it ends. Um, I still think it's interesting that Gia's all like just can't see the hotness with the glasses. It's like a Superman thing, you know? It's like, oh, <laughs> just, you know, Clark Kent to Superman to remove the glasses. I know. It's, it's, so, it's so funny. It's such a funny trope because glasses are just like not a thing that hides like the hotness of a person right. or hides the identity of a person. But right. – it is a very funny play on that kind of yeah. thing. Like, you know, if it reminds her of him too much as a kid, you know, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. And, then... and I, yeah, I get that that could be like an association where you're just like locked into like, this is Minchiel as like, as I remember him as a dorky little kid. Yeah. I think maybe mm -hmm. it would be easier if the webtoon made that a little bit more explicit, but they are, they are kind of getting there. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting, like, you know, I feel like over time we're going to keep seeing more and more that Minchel really has, like, always been into her. Oh, know? yeah. And just, you know, so I think that's going to be interesting to see play out and see at what speed Gia realizes that and how mm -hmm. that affects the relationship. Right. 
And maybe um, how she looks back on things that like she's starting yeah. to do with the glasses. Like, yep. wow, like this is really stuck with him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it's like talks to him and is like, oh, okay, maybe I'm thinking too much into it. I'm reading too much into it, you know. Mm -hmm. But we don't know. Um, and then we also were still having this, again, parallel storylines done so well in this, um, just, it's just, this is well done. Like, um, it's got, uh, the, uh, story with her previous writing career. We're mm -hmm. slowly etching away, finding what that was and what that was like and everything. Yes. Because now through her work, she has been tricked into Oof, writing writing like yeah oh that was such a great twist that was so great i did not see that coming so do you think like it was just it was just because that's what i thought too like her coworker would just happen to be reading her book right not that yeah. it was like a plant basically yeah i thought it was good yeah i thought it was gonna be like that was the focus of the situation like we were going to focus on like, oh my God, her coworkers reading her book. And like, does she tell her coworker? And like, you know, yeah. she like, basically what happened where, you know, she like asks her about it and her coworkers kind of brutally honest. And she's like, Oh, like, <laughs> I love all the arrows, like just uh, yeah. sticking in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I thought that was going to be the focus of it. And I didn't, you know, think they were going to take it to this next level of like, this is a plant and we're, you know, setting Gia up in this cafe with a job so that she starts writing again. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's such like an elaborate scheme. Yeah. And it's, it is just on the verge of being unbelievable, but I'm, but it's enough where I'm like invested and I want to see where it goes that I'm buying into it. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Because it is, yep. it is a lot to, set up just to get one writer to start writing again when you yeah. think of like the enormity of like talented writers out there that they could be focusing on but it's just it's just okay enough that i'm buying into it and yeah. i'm interested to see where this goes mm -hmm. it would be as someone that like if g is that influential to this person that much of a right. like at one point mentor or something you know like that just despite maybe not being the most logical choice that, yeah, I mean, we could have invested in other writers or something emotionally I'm connected here. And it means, right. it means something to me to, right. you know, to get her back on board. Um, I love how unabashedly, like just, uh, if you're watching a, on screen a minute, you know, like just the, you know, we're going to draw this sultry, like the top glamour shots, you know, they're just, <laughs> yeah. they're just good. Um, and then, uh, again, what this does well is we're now, no one is, no one's flat. No character is flat in this, mm -hmm. in this manhwa because in the process of revealing this scheme to get Gia to write again, we're, we're expanding on and opening doors for the backstory of her coworkers because yeah. There's a whole sort of drinking thing. Like I'm going to talk him into drinking and we might make a mistake again, you know, cause we want yeah. a mistake to happen again. And then the sun, uh, sun calls, you know, so we, 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 we like planted the seed for a whole nother thing to expand yes. on these characters and what has happened to them. So yes. well done. Yeah. Yeah, I love that this story just keeps getting more layered and more nuanced and and nothing ever feels like when they when they're bringing in something new, nothing ever feels out of left field or like it doesn't fit with the story. It's always like just like a deeper reveal or a more interesting direction that this this, you know, whole story is taking and everything is interrelated somehow. There's never anything where I'm like, "Ugh." Like <laughs> This doesn't yeah. feel like it fits with what, you know, we've been seeing from our main characters. And even if we, yep. and now we're at the point where even if we take a break from our main characters, I feel like we're only doing something that enriches their storyline once we get back to them. Yep. And this, this like delicate balance of storylines here is the 
perfect for letting them take all the time they want or a lot of time anyways to move the relationship of GM Mitchell yes. forward. Because yes. that's really the key here is you have to have enough complexity and other things going on to allow for this to last a while. Because obviously, yes. you know, when they're like resolutely together and in love and admit it to one another and everything, the series is done. Right. You know, and right. should be, you know. Right. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what else I have. What What else to say? Maybe anything else? Oh, I my comments. I just wrote his penis, and I'm trying to remember exactly why. It's something like, um, you know, what do you want or something like that. It was just like to me, oh, setting sure. up like, like <laughs> she was like teasing teasing him or something. Um. So yeah, that's what I, yeah my random nothing comments. So I love um, it. Yeah, maybe meant to be all the way up to episode Agreed. 65. I think we should keep going. Like, you know, I don't know if people are I interested, would. you know, webtoons are big, you know, and uh, just keep uh, keep on a truck and it's, it's a fun thing yeah. to read. And yeah, I really love I really love webtoons. Um, I'm reading, obviously, several several other series that I've really been enjoying. But this has been one of my favorites. Um, and I think a really great one to cover. Mm -hmm. does dana read this one at all because i've been like getting trying to get an excuse to get dana back on the show yeah and, i have um, to check in with her because i know we talked to her about it and how much we had enjoyed it when we talked about yeah. kind of webtoons in general so i'll check in with her and mm -hmm. see if she has been okay because otherwise i know they're talking about watching spy family so like at yep. some point I might have her on the podcast to talk about that but that's the ways both out. of them on that would be fun well, I I mean, I don't know if they have the setup to do both of them, but uh maybe at once. But maybe, yeah. Mm hmm So but you have to get yeah, my we'll own hubby back up. on at some point. Yeah, we were gonna do that a long time ago. And I forgot how that fell through for something. Um, yeah. It was a show we were kids, watching. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean mm -hmm. they are they are the mm -hmm. great spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what he is, uh, what Chris is wanting to watch these days or anything like that. So, yeah, it's um, get him on that. I want to watch that uh, that movie yet too. Um, what was it? I was talking about Unordinary or Un something or whatever. It's a Korean movie on Netflix. Yeah, I think it was Unordinary. Um, heard that's good. And that was that. that was um. God, that sounds so super familiar. Was that a webtoon too? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I just texted, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, texted somebody but... about that. Yeah. Or were you? Oh, maybe. Boy, that's how I'm Minnesotan. I think actually I'm getting this confused. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. The soju's kicking in, I guess. Um, <laughs> the, I think you told me. It about is a web. It is a webtoon. Yep. I'm thinking of something else, I think. I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. check it out right now because I added it to my list just recently. Um okay. unlocked. That's why I was confused. Unlocked. Sure. Similar. Similar. Yeah. It's a one hour fifty seven minute movie on Netflix. So Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Figure something out. We got all kinds of things coming down the pipe. We got Mission Impossible, retrospective. We got yes. maybe meant to be to be covered. We got the anime podcast. We're covering Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, on yep. Plan is on Monday to be talking about Hell's Paradise on there. Phil wants to do a Hell, Heaven and Hell sort of thing. So we're probably sure. do like a Heaven and Hell, Heaven and Hell. That would be fun. Month or something like that, basically. So it's going to be like we're going to kick it off um, early in July here with uh, Hell's Paradise review. Then we're going to get into um, either Jujutsu Season 2 or, if I, I get it in time, um, Heavenly Delusion. And mm -hmm. Jujutsu, you know, it deals with demons and stuff. So that's how we're getting away with the, the hell element of the stuff. So No, I love that. That's really fun. Yeah. So, 
All right, everybody, that's uh, some of the things coming up. And otherwise, that's been episode 143 of Popcast on the Rocks. Make sure you follow us on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all those sorts of places. Um, we're on podcast directories, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. The video version is available on Spotify. Sometimes I put polls and questions on there as well. So if you want to engage with us that way, go for it. Um, let us know what you want to see from us going forward um check out our demon slayer season three review we just wrapped that up and everything as the season concluded um reviews are much appreciated on podcast services um that kind of thing um and then share these things out otherwise killing the flower they wrote our theme song you can check them out on spotify apple music uh youtube and instagram so Go ahead and check a look at them. Thank you for everybody that jumped mm -hmm. in the chat. Uh, Renato, I know, was mm -hmm. lurking earlier. MJ said she was lurking. She has a uh, Twitch channel. She's MJ Honeybee. Make sure you follow her. She's getting a really good following there. She's a really nice, good Discord you can be a part of. If you want to talk to people, mm -hmm. she plays Dead by Daylight a lot. But in Discord, they talk about other things as well. So make sure you check that out. That's MJ Honeybee. And then um, Francesco for being in the chat too, you know, with the fun alien question. So that's uh, it's always nice. Mm -hmm. so, that will do it from us. Um, Andrea, thanks for joining me. Of course. As always, cheers, everybody. Oh, you got to get your spoon out for that mm -hmm. fruit. Start digging. <laughs>